This is the case of a 51 year old man with a 2 month history of left hemifacial and left ear pain and a 1 month onset of diplopia and disequilibrium. On examination, he had hypesthesia in the left 5.1 and 5.2 territories along with left 6 cranial nerve paralysis and decreased hearing in his left ear. The head CT shows a tumor of mixed density in the left cerebellopontine angle and Meckel's cave. Likewise, a MRI shows a tumor of mixed signal intensity in the CP angle following trigeminal nerve in the enlarged Meckel's cave. The tumor displays marked restricted diffusion, highly suggestive of an epidermoid tumor. Look at the marked displacement of the brainstem on the uh, T2 weighted uh, coronal images. The tumor is immediately identified upon approaching the uh, cerebellopontine angle. This is the acousticofacial nerve complex. We recognize the uh, facial nerve superiorly and the superior vestibular nerve inferiorly. And this is the pearly white tumor being dissected of the anterior aspect of the acousticofacial nerve complex. Working superior to the nerve, the large tumor is being mobilized towards the petrous bone and due to its large size, it is internally debulked using suction aspiration to allow better mobi and safe mobilization. Sharp tumor dissection using the micro scissors is also used to <coughs> cut the tumor into smaller pieces that are readily removed. This is the tumor being dissected from the anterior aspect of the uh, acousticofacial nerve complex and being brought in the superior corridor from where the large tumor chunks are being progressively removed. So as more and more tumor is being removed from the cerebellopontine angle, we get some anatomic structures into view such as the superior petrosal vein that we see in the superior angle. And as more tumor pieces are resected, we start seeing the displaced trigeminal nerve rootlets. These are additional pieces of tumor as they are removed from the cerebellopontine angle. The friable nature of the tumor renders its resection easier. The cerebellopontine angle is accordingly emptied from its tumor content and this allows us to recognize some normal atomic structures such as the lower cranial nerves and from the superior corridor, we now recognize clearly the fibers of the trigeminal nerve. More tumor is being resected of the lateral aspect of the brainstem. This tumor is different from the other tumor component and it is distinctly yellowish in color suggesting degenerative changes inside. 
the lateral aspect of the brainstem is now clearly recognized as more tumors are more tumor pieces are being removed so we recognize now the capsule of the tumor that blends with the arachnoid in the depths and as more dissection is done this brings into view the basilar artery suggesting the ends of the microsurgical dissection in order not to jeopardize the perforators from the basilar artery next we shift to the endoscope and the purpose of shifting to the endoscope is to see the angles that the straight view of the microscope does not allow us to see so this is the displaced trigeminal nerve as it enters the Meckel's cave and we see here that the entrance into Meckel's cave is plugged with tumor pieces so we have to resort to a curved suction probe in order to enter Meckel's cave and dissect and aspirate the friable tumor. So progressive rotation movement allows us to dissect and aspirate some of the tumor at the ostium of Meckel's cave and as more and more tumor is being resected we can approach the endoscope this is the 30 degree endoscope and as the endoscope is approached we can see clearly inside of Meckel's cave and additional tumor is removed and by proceeding this way we get to the wall of Meckel's cave and this is the tumor being scraped off the Meckel's cave wall again here we note a yellowish tumor component that is stickier in nature so we have here to uh, change our strategy and introduce an angled dissector to further fragment the tumor allowing more of its resection so this is the tumor being fragmented and then the curved suction probe is introduced and now we again change modify our strategy and irrigate through the suction probe and tumor fragments are expressed outside of Meckel's cave and you see the large pieces of tumor that are collected from the cerebropontine angle as they are expressed out of the uh, Meckel's cave. So this is progressive tumor collection working again from the corridor superior to the acousticofacial nerve complex. So this is the tumor being suction aspirated. Additional irrigation into Meckel's cave using the same technique provides a lesser yield the second time. But again, this is successful when another irrigation is attempted 
as we can see here. So additional tumor fragments are pushed outside of Meckel's cave, allowing their collection. So the idea of assisting our microsurgical resection with the endoscope proved successful because it allowed us access to otherwise impossible angles with the microscope. The endoscope is also useful in into accessing the tumor component lateral to the brain stem. So we see here the yellowish tumor component being pulled out and this is more of the tumor being resected. So more tumor is being removed in a stepwise fashion. Going back into Meckel's cave, we can see now clearly the wall of Meckel's cave and in particular we note the carotid artery, the internal carotid artery pulsations that are clearly evident. So this is the cavernous internal carotid artery as we can see it pulsating through the wall into Meckel's cave. We recognize an additional tumor fragment at five o'clock along the anterior wall of Meckel's cave and that's one fragment we are trying to collect using a curved suction tip so uh, here is the uh, fragment as it is being pulled out of Meckel's cave and added to our collection going back in now with the 70 degree endoscope we can inspect the superior wall of Meckel's cave and we observe a whitish tumor remnant that is again suction irrigated and removed. Going back to the microscope we get to the final tumor component at the root entry zone of the trigeminal nerve and this component is progressively dissected and it is collected. We see additional tumor in the superior angle and these tumor pieces are fragmented and cautiously dissected of the lateral aspect of the brainstem of the brainstem. So tumor, the last tumor pieces are being removed and we get to the final tumor piece that is removed this way and next we get into the arachnoid and CSF signaling the end of the tumor resection. The patient had a smooth post-op course and the post-op MRI done at three weeks shows complete resection of the tumor. This is a comparison between the pre-op and post-op images on T1 and on T2 showing that the tumor was entirely resected. Diffusion weighted images confirm total tumor resection. Thank you for your attention.